Today we're looking at self-blinking LEDs. These have been around for, gosh, several years. I remember uh, having some of these when I was in my uh, early 20s. So they've been around for almost 40 or almost 20 years. Um, and they've, you know, the prices on these things have come down. They used to be a little bit more pricey uh, LED than a, just a standard LED, but the prices have come down dramatically over the years. But the really neat thing, I mean, what really sets these apart from normal LEDs is that they flash on their own. They don't require an external uh, circuit to flash. And uh, I'll give you just a quick background about flashing LEDs. Uh, back when uh, back when I was a kid going through high school through electronics class, uh, the only way we could really get LEDs to flash was to build what's called a 555 timer circuit. And a 555 timer circuit uses a small microchip. It's a, the 555 um, flip-flop, basically is what it's called, because it flips uh, off and on depending um, depending on the, the voltage that's coming into it. So uh, you used to have to build a, I won't say it was an, it's an elaborate circuit, but I mean, you know, it's, it's a beginner's circuit, but it, it, you know, it requires about three resistors, a capacitor, and a, uh, a 555 timer um, integrated circuit, which they're super cheap, and then the LED that you want to uh, use to blink, and then of course the battery. But what they did over the years is they were able to shrink the technology to a point where, and I'm going to hold this, and it's going to be really difficult to see, but I'm going to try to hold it so you can see it. There's a little black dot right there. Right there. See that black dot right where I'm pointing at there? That little black dot that sits there on the, I believe that's on the anode, but that little black dot that's right there, Maybe if I turn it, you might be able to see it a little bit better. No, I think that's about it. Right there, that little tiny dot that's right there, that's actually the 555 timer circuit now. Um, that's how small they've been able to shrink these things. So what they did was they, they can actually embed them inside the LED, so there's no more need for that, um, for that exterior or external uh, circuitry. Now... The drawback on these is that because it is an embedded IC in, inside of that, you only get one flash rate. And some of them flash more than others. This one flashes about once a second, maybe twice a second. Um, some of them flash faster than that. Some of them flash slower than that. But I believe twice a second is about the average flash. And they do have the same voltage ratings as a normal LED. So one of this, you know, this specific color, which is kind of a, it's it's kind of an amber um, orange color, it's going to take about three volts to get to its maximum brightness before it, it burns out or you see little wisps of the magic smoke come out of it. Um, as my old electronics teacher used to say, when you see the magic smoke, it doesn't work anymore. So, you know, it'll take about three, it'll take up to about three volts. You might be able to push it a little bit further, maybe to 3.2. But another really cool thing that these things do, and I'm, I'm just going to turn this one off. Another really cool thing about these, and I'm going to hit the light there. Sorry about that. This is the way you can best see the how these LEDs work. Um, they can actually be used as a way to make non-blinking LEDs blink as well. So this is just a standard red non-blinking LED. But when you put it in series with a blinking LED, the blinking LED acts as basically as its own little uh, switch. So it will cause the non-blinking LED to blink too because it's cutting on and cutting off and cutting on and cutting off. And it's causing the standard LED to also cut on and cut off. Um, you might be able to, to put a resistor in there and maybe work on the timing a bit, but I doubt it. I mean, usually when the power's off, the power's off. If you can't get, you know, if you can't get the voltage and current across the resistor in time for this one to light up, then it's probably not going to not gonna light up. So it's best to use a blinking LED with normal LEDs when you either need to supplement the light 
of this one LED or you can the application that you're using them in doesn't require um, a specific timed effect for the blink like it doesn't require um, you know one to blink and then another to blink or one to blink fast and one to blink slow if they blink in tandem like this then it doesn't you know it, it doesn't matter if they do that so um, you can use one of these blinking LEDs on the top of a rangefinder you could use both of these you know, you could use a blinking and a standard LED on, you know, on the range, the top or on a rangefinder on a Mando helmet. And that's a real easy way to do a, to get the blinking effect like, uh, like the Boba Fett uh, rangefinder. Um, real easy way to get a blinking effect without having to create a whole circuit. Really, you just need power. And, um, you know, you can use a small, one of the smaller um, quarter-sized or nickel-sized button cell batteries will at least power one. I don't think they'll power both um, adequately enough, but I know it will power one. And um, I'll show you another quick application, uh, uh, this uh, gauntlet that I've been working on for a commission uh, where I use one as the light. And I'm going to raise the camera a bit here so you can see this. So the blaster light on this gauntlet, when you cut it on, there you go. It is a. It's the same type of LED as this one back here. It's a self-blinking LED where the uh, circuit is built into it. Now it's just there for effect. You know, it's not super bright. Um, it runs off of one of those little nickel-sized button cell batteries, so you know you can't leave it on all day. But obviously, you know, in the camera, it's it's pretty bright. So there's a lot of different applications where you can use this, um, and for the price, really you can't uh, you you can't beat it for the price. I bought a whole bag of these things for, and there's like 30 in this bag. I bought the whole bag for I think around 12 dollars shipped from Amazon. So um, they're you know really have a just an unlimited use amount of uses for those. And the other really neat thing as well is that when you pull the LED out of it, you're still left with these really neat looking cases. They kind of look like bullets or rockets. You know, so you can cut these little nibs off. These are balloon lights that you tie to uh, balloons. You tie to the little ribbons on the bottom of the balloon um, and you, you put it inside the balloon. And um, and it, it lights the balloon up. Or you can also, I think there's there's also like paper lanterns you can put these in. There's, you know, there's a, a bunch of different craft uses for these things. But um, but these look a lot like little, you know, bullet casings or rockets. So you can pull these apart. You know, they come apart into three pieces like this. And basically, the bottom unscrews and you've got the top here. Same thing with this, you know, the little top prism comes out. And these pieces come off, and you're left with um, individual pieces that you can paint. You know, if you want to paint them up, if you want to silver these up, you know, or aluminum them up so that they look like metal, um, you can do that. And uh, you know, you could maybe put some little fins on these to make them look like little rockets for for uh, uh, hand, you know, either gauntlet rockets or like you know, rockets for hand guards that kind of thing. There's, like I said, the uses for these things, it's crazy. And for the price, you really, you just can't beat it. And you can get these in a bunch of different colors too. Um, red, green, blue, you know, pink, <laughs> purple, whatever your, whatever your uh, need is, they've got it. I, I just stuck with the amber color because the am amber, that's, you know, that's the color of Mandalorian technology. So... Um, another cool thing is if you want to use it as a blaster light, you can always put the prism back on it to scatter the photons created by the LED, and you get a, a bit of a brighter effect with the scattered light. So it, it works, you know, it works out pretty well to be such a low-cost item. Now, um, what I've got um, powering this is a, a 4.2 volt lithium-ion battery. Um, you can use one of those. If you don't have another LED that you're powering with it, I would definitely recommend um, using a, a small resistor. Just 
something real small, 1K ohm or less. I mean, that's that's really it. Um, this is you know, this is something that anybody can use. You don't have to be an electronics genius um, to to use this specific uh, piece of of um, hardware. It's very simple. All you got to do is you know uh, pay for a pack of these things and and just pop the LED out of it. Uh, the posts on it when you pull it out are super small, so you want to be gentle with it. I'll pull this one out so you can see. You have to clip one post wraps around um, the little piece that holds it in, the little plastic piece, and the other post just sticks out of the bottom. So they are pretty delicate. You're not going to have a lot of posts there. So be careful. If you break the post, it's probably unusable at that point. So it may be a good idea to go ahead and solder a couple wires on and then use some heat shrink similar to to this when you use some heat shrink to cover up those posts after you've soldered the wires on uh, that way you'll get a lot of good use out of this little led and you don't have to worry about losing the posts on it because once the posts are gone it's it's dead but that's that's really it um if you've got any questions feel free to uh, hit me up on my facebook page uh at uh, Mandalore the Uniter on Facebook. And uh, if you enjoy these uh, War Master Workshop videos, please feel free to support me on Patreon. Just look up War Master's Workshop at patreon.com. And uh, we'll see you in the next workshop short.